Jason. So we're back out in the garage. We are working on Glenn's Firebird again and uh, started out with the drive shaft, getting the new universal joints pressed into it. I had a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, this is an aftermarket drive shaft. The steel drive shafts in these cars tended to have uh, vibration issues. So aluminum aftermarket drive shafts are pretty common uh, change out, repair, upgrade that people made in these cars. And they use a different size universal joint than the originals. They actually use two sizes of uni universal joints. So I'm gonna have to measure those and get the correct U-joints ordered. Obviously the factory U-joints don't fit. I'll do a separate video for you guys showing how to measure universal joints for sizing. But uh, we're gonna sit this to the side for the time being and work on a bunch of the other parts that we have to, uh, to get put onto this thing. All right, let me show you the other stuff that we're putting on. So these are all really nice parts, high quality stuff. We have a new torque arm. Glenn got this from BMR. Same with the new track bar. And they both have urethane bushings. Now Glenn also got complete urethane bushing sets for the front and rear sway bars. And new Excel G shock absorbers for the rear. The urethane bushings are gonna help to improve his handling. And the new shocks are gonna tighten things up a little bit in the rear. They have a little better, uh, a little stiffer rate, compression rate than the factory ones. Pretty much all of this stuff is remove and replace. Uh, nothing complicated, nothing elaborate. Take the old part out, install the new part. So let's get under there and do it. So far, smooth sailing. We've got the original sway bar bushings and end links out on the rear. We've got our new ones here, bushings and links. Before I put this back in, I'm gonna go through, there's corrosion where the old bushings rub. So I'm gonna clean that off with a, with a buffing wheel on both ends. And then just wipe the whole bar off and make sure I don't see any cracks or damage or anything like that. And then we'll go ahead and get it put back up in there. There we go. We got all the corrosion cleaned off from the old bushings. We got our new urethane bushings in place. Plenty of urethane grease on them. Uh, anytime you're doing urethane bushings, especially where they're in direct contact with a moving part, it's important that you apply grease. Otherwise, you're probably gonna end up with squeaks. So now we'll just put it back in, in the opposite order of removal. All right, next thing we've got to, we're putting on here is this new solid track bar. So this one, also from BMR, it's greasable on both ends. It has urethane bushings. This is the factory track bar here. You can see that it's made out of a piece of U-shaped stamped steel. These have a had a habit of flexing under high torque loads. So this is an upgrade not only in the handling department, but also in the maintenance department. Having those grease fittings on the end will help to uh, keep those bushings healthy for a long time and, and doing what they're supposed to do. So. It's just two bolts, take the old one out, put the new one in, make sure you get the grease fittings once it's all installed and the bolts are tight. All right, everybody. So we're moving right along. So we've got our old shock absorber here and one of our new shock absorbers here. Now, if you've never done these before, the lower mount where it mounts to the axle is very straightforward. The stud goes into the axle, you tighten the stud end, and then you tighten the shock end uh, until the bushing starts to squish. Make sure these have nylon nuts. Make sure that you get the nylon engaged on the thread because that's what keeps it from backing off. Now the top of the shock is a stud mount. This stud pokes up through the floor of the car. You put your bushing 
down on top once the stud is through the hole. And then you put the, cut the washer and the nut on and tighten it down. It's a relatively straightforward approach. Now the only trick to this is you have to access the stud from inside the car. So you can remove your rear speaker cover right here. It's just held in place with three little push clips. You just lift up and inward on it and it comes off. Then you can fold your carpet back and right down in here, that hole there is where your upper shock stud pokes through. And if nobody's messed with it and, or they put it back together in the past the way it should be, this little piece of foam is gonna be right on top of it. The nice thing about this design is it keeps those threads from getting real corroded and nasty so that nut almost always spins right off. Okay team, we're cruising right along. Let me show you where we're at. We've got our new sway bar bushings and sway bar end links installed. We've got our new rear shock absorbers installed. We've got our new track bar put in. Same on this side, bushings, sway bar links, and shock absorber. I went ahead and got the new torque arm installed. And this thing, I have to think it's gonna be just a huge upgrade. It's so much more rigid than the old one. And the same with the, uh, with the track bar. It's so much more rigid than the old one. This car is gonna handle so much better through turns than it did before by taking all that flex out. So the next thing we're gonna do, if you remember from the last video, I showed you that the transmission pan is leaking and you can see it's even still got a drip on it right up there at the front. So I'm gonna take this transmission pan off and see what happened inside of it, why it's damaged. Hopefully it's literally just, it was damaged before they installed it and nobody saw it. There's not something hanging inside of that pan that we need to be worried about. See if it's damage that can be welded um, or if I need to pull a pan off of one of the transmission cores that I have here. It's an updated pan. That's not the style transmission pan that would have been on this 4L60 from the factory. This is a very early version 4L60 and it's a more later version pan. So once I get the, get the pan off, I'll be able to see if there's anything wrong in there, uh, if they've gone to the later version for a reason, or what the next best move is. Glenn more or less told me like, put another pan on it, fix this pan, whatever I need to do to get it ready to go. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I've got the pan down off the transmission. Now I dumped all the fluid that was remaining in the pan out of it. And I wanted to show you guys, from the looks of the bottom of the pan, everything inside the transmission is fine. I don't see anything that I wouldn't expect to see on a transmission that's been freshly built and then run on the dyno. Now, here's what I do see. Right here is where we had that leak. And it's obvious that something with the square corner was inside the pan and pushed out on it right there. Now I didn't notice it until I got the pan off of the off of the transmission, but there's a matching square corner mark over here. And they're they're right in line with each other. I don't see any other damage in the pan. But my suspicion, my hunch is they might have sat the valve body or some other part in here when they were disassembling the transmission and then it got hit or bumped or something heavy put down on top of it and that pushed it down into the corners here hard enough that it made a little hole here right in the side of the pan. And you can see very obviously this is damage from the inside. So this happened before the transmission ever got to us, ever got shipped, this happened 
you know, during assembly or prior to assembly. Now if I hold it up to light here, you can actually see light coming through that hole there. Who's ready for an update? So I did wind up pulling a good pan off of one of the core transmissions I have here. It's the updated pan to match the updated filter. And it looks like they did some updates inside the transmission in the valve body also. So I think the updated pan was the right way to go. It's all nice and clean, looks good. Looks like it was there from the factory. So we've only got a couple things left to do. I gotta change the engine oil, which that's quick and easy, and get the front sway bar bushings and sway bar links replaced. Well, you probably guessed it. We've got the front sway bar out. We're gonna get the old bushings off and then we're gonna get the new bushings and new sway bar links installed. The oil is draining. We'll treat this sway bar just like the other one. We'll get the old bushings off. We'll polish up where the bushings ride just to make sure that all that corrosion is off and it doesn't prematurely wear the new urethane bushings. And then we'll get it put it back in. You know, just like on the back, uh, installation is the opposite of removal. Okay, new bushing is on. Let's get it put back in the car. Little tip here for you. If you're working on something that has a vertical oil filter, and what I mean by vertical is the oil filter opening is pointed up. It helps your engine build oil pressure sooner on that initial fire up if you can fill the filter with oil before you put it back on the vehicle. And also don't forget, get a little bit of that oil and put it on the O-ring. That oil makes sure that the O-ring releases from the sealing surface so you don't accidentally double O-ring your replacement filter. And in case you've never done it, if you do double O-ring it, you're probably going to hear a loud snap upon startup and then see a gigantic puddle of oil on the floor. We've got the new sway bar bushings and links installed in the front. We did our oil change. You can see we've got our new transmission pan that doesn't leak installed. We've got our new torque arm installed along with new rear shocks, new rear sway bar bushings and uh, end links as well as the rear track bar all of that stuff installed too so on that note i'm calling it for this video everybody thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something i appreciate every one of you that uh take your time to check the videos out and see what i'm up to and until the next video take care here's most of the parts we replaced uh none of them huge but all together will make a substantial improvement in the performance and driving of this car. We also took out the old slipping transmission and installed a freshly built upgraded transmission.